the cause and go from there. I, I imagine uh, professionalism is, is put to the test in so many ways in a, in a juncture like this. Yeah, well, I think all the folks at NASA are professional no matter what, but you feel numb. I know I did and I know I do now. Yeah. What, um, it's easy to, uh, for the layperson, to think about space shuttle missions as being routine. Uh, but anybody who knows a little something about this uh, would tell you just the opposite, wouldn't they? They would tell you that because uh, rockets are rockets. Uh, anybody that sits on top of a rocket knows there's a risk involved. And even on entry, although we don't think of that as being nearly as dangerous as ascent, uh, it still has to go perfectly because you're start out at 17,500 miles an hour and you pick up a little speed until you start slowing down in the atmosphere so it has to work well. Well you mentioned that point because we've had conversations before where you've told me really the only part of the mission you sweat is the first eight and a half minutes the the rise to orbit and after that things um, relatively speaking uh, are, are you know and given where you are uh, are relatively safe. Uh, the, the, the prospect of something happening on descent on re-entry how much did that weigh in your mind when you flew not very much uh, certainly you are mindful that the shuttle's got to be in the right attitude and the systems have to be working but there's so much redundancy and since you uh, are not in a situation where you have very powerful rockets that can malfunction in a second and kill you uh, that's not the situation with uh, entry yeah uh, Norm, stand the line, please, if you will. Um, and by the way, have you are you near CNN? Have you are you seeing these pictures yet? Norm, are you still there? I'm here, Miles. I'm watching it on TV. Okay. What does that tell you when you see that? Well, it's breaking up. Okay. Uh, let's go to Jerry Lininger on the line. Uh, Jerry, I don't know if you're home in Northern Michigan, but that's where Jerry's uh, home is. Jerry is a shuttle veteran, also a Mir veteran, retired astronaut as well. Um, Jerry, what, what are your thoughts as you look at this uh, scene and, and what might be going on right now for NASA, for the professionals, for search and rescue? Well, it's, you know, it's a horrible thing, and um, uh, I'm sure they're just trying to put the parts together and try to reconstruct things so it never happens again. Um, you know, you got to get to the root of what happened there. Yeah. What, um, we were just talking to Norm about this, this concept that the most dangerous period of time is the first eight and a half minutes of the mission the point where the, the rockets are firing and uh, all the things are exploding behind you. Uh, how, much, how many scenarios uh, do the crews and their simulations run through on re-entry? Yeah, just, you know, in, I don't want to say infinite, but I mean you train and you train and you train. Um, but I can tell you re-entry, um, you know, the normal re-entry kind of sounds like a locomotive train coming up behind you, very dynamic, you're inside a fireball plasma collapsing around you. Um, it's like the worst turbulence you've ever been on in an airplane. So it is very dynamic, and if you lose your orientation in space and the tiles aren't pointing in the right direction, um, you know, you get what you're seeing here today. Mm -hmm. Jerry, let's listen to James Hartsfield for a minute out of Mission Control. Pertinent to the descent of the Space Shuttle Columbia this morning from orbit. The last communications were received from the Space Shuttle Columbia at approximately 8 a.m. Central Time as it was an altitude of about 200,000 feet above North Central Texas en route to a planned landing at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida at 8.16 a.m. Central Time. Search and rescue teams in the Dallas-Fort Worth area have been alerted to the Space Shuttle contingency. Any debris that may be located in the Dallas-Fort Worth vicinity should be avoided and may be hazardous due to the toxic nature of propellants used on board the shuttle and should be reported to local law enforcement authorities. To repeat, any debris that is located in the Dallas-Fort Worth area should be avoided as it may be hazardous due to toxic substances used as propellant on board the space shuttle and should be reported to local law enforcement authorities. All right, with that, this uh, is Mission Control Houston. With that word of caveat from James Hartsfield, uh, Mission Control Houston, uh, Jerry Leninger, um, what, what goes through, um, on the one hand, you're a technical person, you're an engineer, and I know that, uh, well, you're a medical doctor as well, but uh, you, you go through sort of the technicalities of this, but uh, the other side of you is sort of, uh, it takes your breath away, doesn't it? Jerry, you there? Yes, I, I'm with you. 
What are your thoughts? Well, it's uh, just a horrible thing. Can't, nothing worse. Yeah. I'm going to leave it at that for just a moment. Stay with us if you can. Ricky Lufkin is on the line with us. He's from uh, about 100 miles south of Dallas, where we believe the debris of the Space Shuttle Columbia, oldest orbiter in NASA's fleet, the one that flew first in April of 1981 uh, and flew its last mission, um, this time the 28th mission, clearly from this uh, videotape from WFAA, breaking up into several pieces over southern Texas. Do we have Mr. Lufkin? I'm Hello? sorry. I'm sorry, Ricky Calbert. M Ricky Calbert, are you there? Yes. What did you see? What did you hear, sir? Um, well, it was about uh, 10 till 8 this morning, uh, Central Time, our time. And uh, we, uh, my wife and I heard a, a rumble uh, kind of building, and um, it eventually got to where our house was shaking. Uh, I got up and, and went to, the, to our back door to see if I could see anything. I didn't see anything. Uh, it lasted for maybe a minute and a half, and uh, it, it slowly tapered off. So uh, that's when I went into the living room and turned the TV on to see if I could find anything, uh, to see if maybe they were reporting anything so on the you, local news. How would you, how'd you describe what you saw then? No, I, I did just all what you heard then? Yeah, yeah, just what I heard. Okay, and it was very distinct uh, kind of rumble to it? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Um, it, it, if you live, I mean, it's just like somebody else was saying, or I, I don't know if they were talking about the way this sounded or not, but if you live close to a railroad track, I mean, extremely close, like your back door. That's what it sounds. It sounded like, and that's what it felt like. My entire house was shaking, and it's not a small house. <laughs> wow. Okay. So, um, All right. I, I tried to call in as soon as I could. It took about an hour for me to find a number, but. All right. Well, we appreciate your call and your insights for us. Uh, let's get uh, CNN's Jean Meserve with us. She f covers Homeland Security for us. Uh, the sad truth is that in this day and age, and particularly with uh, an Israeli on board, one of one of the uh, things that is considered is the possibility of terrorism. Gene, uh, that seems remote right now, but uh, what exactly are your sources telling you? Well, I've had a conversation with an administration official who says, based on the information we have right now, it is, quote, highly unlikely that this was related to terrorism. This administration official noting, amongst other things, that the shuttle was, at the time of this uh, apparent breakup, at a very, very high altitude mentioned perhaps because there have been various things written and said about the possible vulnerability of aircraft to weaponry like shoulder-fired missiles, which might be in the hands of terrorists. The multi-agency investigation, of course, uh, will be conducted and its findings will be poured over by officials involved in homeland security and terrorism. But reiterating once again, this official saying it is premature for anyone to jump to any sort of conclusion that this might have been a terrorist event. Miles. Gene Meserve, thank you very much. And we should point out, and uh, Gene, you can amplify on this if you want. Uh, I mean, for example, if you're running through these scenarios, and as long as we're in this area, let's run through them, uh, y you know, a surface-to-air missile, stinger-type thing, would have a maximum range of maybe 10 or 15,000 feet. The, the space shuttle is traveling extremely fast, six times the speed of sound, at about 200,000 feet. And uh, it's hard to imagine um, anything that would be of a terrorist nature that could be involved, correct? Uh, exactly the point, um, oh. that uh, this, uh, this spacecraft was just at too high an altitude for any, anything of that sort, uh, apparently, to have been a factor in what's happened here. All right. Uh, Gene Meserve, thank you very much. Norm Thagard, are you still with us? All right. He's, uh, we're going to cue him up. And uh, just want to recap for those of you who might just now be tuning in. You are looking at what is... Uh, the final moments of the uh, Space Shuttle Columbia on its 28th flight, first flew April of 1981. There you saw a very specific moment there where some added smoke um, came out of the trail there, that single trail. And then subsequent to that, as you look in here, you'll see it develops into multiple, let me try to clear that out for a second, it develops into multiple streams, multiple trails, like a series of comets. You see them breaking up there? You see those, those points there. Clearly, there was something that happened. It was almost like a puff of smoke that uh, I saw. If we could, could we roll that back one more time? And I'll try to identify that point for you where we saw kind of a, a burst of smoke which was left behind as uh, 
prior to that. And I think it was probably, well, you can see here quite clearly there's some pieces there. Uh, I think this might be after, what I, oh, there it is, right there. See that smoke? See that? There was a flash and then a puff of smoke. That was clearly some kind of explosion. Uh, probably a secondary explosion because what you saw first were those initial pieces uh, that came off for a brief period of time, maybe two, three seconds, then a burst, then the smoke that went behind it, and then shortly thereafter, as you see, multiple pieces being tracked there very clearly in this shot. And as I say, it reminds me so much of seeing the space shuttle mirror as it came down to Earth, uh, coming down in multiple pieces, streaking down that way. Uh, very, uh, even to a layperson, uh, this is quite clearly a breakup of the vehicle. Norm Thagard, your thoughts? Is Norm there?